Hello and welcome to our second video of acids and bases. In this video we'll focus on uh, the self-ionization of water, the concept of pH, and how to calculate uh, pH and hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations. So put your thinking cap on, you can see that the calculator is out. Please follow closely. So in any sample of water, small but equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide ions will form, creating conjugate pairs. Conjugate pairs just means things where you have uh, the hydrogen ion moving between the two. That's a specific example. We're, what you see in the diagram is we have two water molecules. And then we see that a hydrogen ion is lost by one and gained by the other, creating hydronium and hydroxide. Uh, now, when we learned about the concept of uh, hydrogen ions, we learned that uh, hydronium and hydro hy hydrogen ion are interchangeable. The reality is, is the hydrogen ions are going to attach onto a water molecule. This is called the self-ionization of water. So um, this can happen in any pure covalent uh, substance um, that's polar. Uh, for example, um, we have ammonia, and when ammonia self-ionizes, it will ammonia form to, oh, sorry, ionize to form ammonium ion and uh, the amino ion. So um, what we see is, is a similar phenomena there. Now the, the dynamics are going to be different. What we need to understand about water when this happens, and this is huge, is that you'll get concentrations of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion that are equal. Of course you're splitting water so it makes sense you get one to one ratio. And both of them are one times ten negative seventh. And you might say that's not very much. And But in reality one mole of water has, uh, one liter of water has 55 moles of water in it. Now, if you want to tinker and do the math, you can, just, or you, you can trust me. Um, and 55 moles of water are there. And in that, you have 3 times 10 to the 25th molecules of water. Um, this is how many water molecules are there. And there's roughly, I believe, around 2 times 10 to the 16th of those, 2, time, two times 10 to the 16th power are ionized. That is a lot. Okay? So... Um, when you think about by numbers and by ratios, uh, this is a large uh, concentration of hydrogen ions. There's a lot of them there. And um, that's what's going to get manipulated. That's how, what we're influencing is this large number of ions that are in any sample of water. So the idea of self-ionization of water at these concentrations is, it, as something we can manipulate must be understood as being reciprocal or being an inverse relationship. As hydrogen ions are increased, through, like I say, if we add acid to a, a sample of water. If we add hydrogen ions, like hydrochloric acid to water, we would expect this number to go up. But because that overall concentration is going to stay the same in, in an equilibrium, and you'll learn more about equilibrium in AP, then this hydroxide value must go down. And that's when you get an acid, okay, is when you have excess hydrogen ions. Those uh, react with hydro hydroxide ions, leaving behind an acidic system. And the opposite is also true. When you add hydroxide ions to a system, the hydrogen ion concentration must drop. And this is the, the backbone of acids and bases. So um, I just m mentioned this. The ion product constant for water is this value, 1 times 10 negative 14 um, molar squared. You really don't see this unit expressed much. This number is what's important, is the product of these two concentrations is constant um, at 25 Celsius, which is lab temperature. Okay, so at lab temperature, you would expect in a water sample, these two values multiplied will always equal this number. Okay, you can lock that in. Um, this is called Kw, the ion product constant for water. This is its this, the shortened form of saying ion product constant for water. Uh, and here it is expressed all together for you in one big uh, sentence there. You really don't need to express the meter, the molarity uh, squared. I almost said meters. Oops, there I said it. So um, this is what we're going to be shifting around in acids and bases. We can use this phenomenon or this mathematical relationship to calculate um, hydrogen ions if we know hydroxide ion concentration and vice versa. All we really would do is manipulate this formula to solve for one or the other. Let's say, for example, I gave you hydrogen ion concentration and I said, what's the hydroxide ion concentration? Well, hydroxide ion concentration could be calculated like that. If I need you to find hydrogen ion concentration, like that. All I've done is manipulated this equation using 1 times 10 negative 14 for Kw, and I get these two simple sentences. So here we go. Find uh, the hydroxide ion concentration of a solution is 2.5 times 10 negative 5. Calculate hydrogen ion concentration. So we've been given, a little erasure here, we've been given a value 
um, for hydroxide ion concentration. So we have this, and we need to find this guy. Okay, so what we're going to do is do Kw divided by the hydroxide gives hydrogen, and that's going to be this formula here. So in our calculator, we're going to re-express re this. I'm not going to go ahead and give you an expression. Divided by the given value of hydroxide, 2.5 times 10 negative 5. So in the calculator, you would press in 1 double E negative 14 divided by 2.5 double E negative 5. So, operation, and my answer is 4 times 10 negative 10. That's a molar value. So, um, let's look at the next one. Hydrogen ion concentration is 8.910 negative 2. Calculate hydroxide concentration. So, in the hydroxide concentration, we're just going to do 1 times 10 negative 14 divided by the known hydrogen ion concentration, 8.9 times 10 negative 2. So, into my calculator, 1 double E negative 14 divided by 8.9. Double E negative 2. And we get 1.1236 E negative 13. Now, how many sig figs should I have? The answer is 3. So I'm going to shorten 1.1236 to be 1.12 uh, times 10 to the negative 13 molar uh, as the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay. So you get the, the idea. That's very straightforward con uh, uh, conversion. So understanding that um, between one and the other, it's kind of easy to see how these calculations are managed. So uh, calculating hydrogen hydroxide concentration in an acid, hydrogen ions are always greater than hydroxide concentration. So if my hydrogen ion concentration is between these two values, 1 10 to the 0 to 1 to the negative 7th, it's going to be acidic. And in a base, if hydroxide ion concentration is greater than hydrogen ion, then um, uh, this range will be true. Okay, So when we look at a value like this, we should be able to say pretty quickly, am I dealing with an acid or a base? So if my hydrogen ion concentration is between 1 times 10 negative 3 and 1, or 1 times 10 negative 0, 1, 1 times 10 negative 7, that's acidic. Notice how the exponent is between 0 and 7. It's acidic. My hydrogen ions 1 uh, greater than uh, 1 times 10 negative 7 or sorry, smaller than 1 times 10 negative 7, then it's going to be basic. And if my hydroxide ion concentration is between 10 to the 0 and 10 negative 7, it's going to be basic also. Um, and we could convert these all to hydrogen ion concentrations to be sure. But you, know, you get the idea. So this is a graphic that's kind of a cartoon of the big, of the big thinking here is that um, in an acid you have hydrogen ion concentration dominating and base you have hydroxide and it exactly uh, neutral is where those are balanced and the pH scale is used in order to put these these kind of cryptic exponents into whole number values that we can work with directly and much more familiarly okay so it takes that very small number that small almost insignificant seeming exponent and gives it a nice heavy number we can attach uh, big ideas to and so you notice that when a pH and this H stands for hydrogen ion concentration is between 0 and 7 our system is acidic between 7 and 14, it's basic, okay? Um, and this is the, the crux of what we need to know about the pH. The scale goes from 0 to 14, although you will learn in the future that you can have negative pHs with hydrogen ion concentrations large enough. They're just in, in substances that are designed to have massive numbers of hydrogen ions formed. Um, we've already mentioned the second bullet. Um, in When calculating, we will use log to generate pH, okay? So um, we'll talk about that calculation in a moment. pH is a base 10 logarithm, so I'll show you in the calculator where that becomes important. Um, when we do this, we need, it allows us to work on a whole number scale. And so the graphic we have here, let's start with neutral. We have equal balance of hydrogen and hydroxide. When we have an acid, we have imbalance, more hydrogen than hydroxide. And in a base, the opposite, more hydroxide than hydrogen. And um, the, the scale gives us a nice, easy idea, uh, way to see that. The logarithm val value is the power to which 10 must be raised to get a certain number. In this case, the power is pH or pOH. So log of base 10 of 10 uh, 
to the power of y gives you the value y. So if my log 1 times 10 to the first gives us a pH of 1, uh, log, log 1 times 10 negative 5th gives me negative 5. And so it's basically pulling that exponent down. Now keep in mind, um, it's, when we do this, this is going to be a negative log, and it's a negative log because the numbers we're dealing with are really small. Okay, remember hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion concentrations are values that are going to be um, anywhere from uh, 10 to the negative 1 to 10 to the negative 12th. So to get ourselves onto the pH scale, we're going to make it a negative log, and our value will be, be between 0 and 14. So here's an example. If the hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium concentration is 1 times 10 negative 8, then pH must be 8. Pen. So, and I get that from looking at my exponent. Now, this works when your coefficient out here is 1. Um, but when it's not 1, we have to do a little extra math, and we'll see that here. So, when we actually do the calculations, you've been watching me calculate on the TI calculator here. But if you're on your iPhone or other similar calculator, you're going to use a button, log base 10, um, and... Uh, something that gives you an idea you're dealing with log. Here's our button right here. Um, so if we want to go from hydrogen ion concentration to pH with a calculator, uh, let's say for example we have 3.09 times 10 negative 5, we're going to do negative log 3.09 W negative 5 to get that pH. So let's punch that in right now. So I'm going to press my negative. Notice I'm not pressing minus. I'm pressing the negative key. This chime, saint, the sign changing key. Negative log 3.09 doubly negative 5. Oops, nope, that's in the base. See, you got to be careful on these TI calculators. you got to tab over, get out of the base, and go into the main number here. And so 3.09 doubly negative 5. There's my hydrogen ion concentration. That's going to give me a pH of 4.51004, shortened to 4.510. Um, Keep in mind when you're doing this to tinker with your calculator to make sure your numbers make sense, okay? Uh, generally, your pH is going to be right around your exponent. Four, in case this is negative five, you expect to be a little bit below five since this value is greater than one. So as this number increases, you would expect this value uh, to, uh, to uh, get lower than five. So moving on. So the number of sig figs in pH is kind of an interesting idea. Since we're dealing with a scaled number off a logarithm, that logarithm first digit in the pH value is actually not a sig fig. So this value is not a sig fig, the 4. Um, what we go by is the number of sig figs we have in our hydrogen ion concentration is the same number of sig figs we keep after the decimal in the pH. Okay, So if we had 3 sig figs in our log value, or in, our, in our hydrogen ion concentration in this case, then we're going to have 3 sig figs in our pH after the decimal. So here's an example. Find pH if the hydrogen ion concentration is 5 times 10 negative 6. So notice you have two sig figs here. How many digits did you have after the main number or after the decimal in pH? Two. So here we go. We're going to go negative log. We're going to tab past the base and go straight to the main number. 5.0 doubly negative 6. The parentheses already closed for you. And my pH value is going to be 5. 5. 0. There's my two sig figs I kept after the decimal because I had two sig figs in my concentration. pOH scale. We can examine the base ion concentration by calculating pOH in the same exact manner as pH. It's the mirror image. It's perfectly opposite of pH. The range is just like pH is 0 to 14. And it fluctuates inversely with pH. When pOH is 0 to 7, you have a basic system. Exactly 7, neutral. POH is 7 to 14, your system is acidic. So you see how it's very similar. Um, recall back when we were doing the hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion concentrations that the ion product constant for water is 1 times 10 negative 14. Well, our scale is um, the negative log of that value, 14. So, and this will always be true, pH plus POH is always equal to 14. Um, and so here we have some very simple calculations down bottom here. When pH is 6, POH must be 6 plus um, 6 from 14 gives 8. Uh, my pH is 4. 4 from 14 is 10. My pOH must be 10. My pOH is 3. 3 from 14 gives me 11. pH of 11. When pOH is 11, 11 from 14 gives 3. So you see how these, these will always add to form 14. So you can use that as a tool in your conversions.
given pH or pOH, we can also find oops, we can also find hydrogen on, or we can also find concentration by using the inverse of the log. So this is basically doing the backwards of the negative log, uh, doing the reverse of the negative log. To find hydrogen ion concentration, set 10 to the power of negative pH, and the same as is true for the pOH. So our hydrogen ion concentration will be equal to 10 raised to the power of negative pH, and hydroxide 10 to the negative pOH. So in our calculator, if we our pH is 4.510, we're simply going to press the 10 to the x key. Notice what we get, that's there's no inverse or anything, it's the same key as your log key, but it's not the inverse. Um, so I've got 10 to the x, and I'm going to do negative 4.510, and our value is 0 0.00031. Um, uh, what you have here on the calculator actually is I'm not floating enough digits, but it is, it is a correct value, 3.09 times 10 to the negative fifth. So here's a challenging idea. Given a molarity of a solution containing only an acid, now remember you've got water with acid dropped into it, okay? Always consider that if acid concentration is less than the concentration of water that forms naturally, in other words, the ion, the ion uh, concentration of hydrogen ions already in water, which was one times 10 to the negative seven, uh, the, uh, the pH of the solution will be seven, not the negative log, log of a really small hydrogen ion concentration. So let me give you an example. If we make a solution of hydrochloric acid, okay, by putting in enough to put the concentration of hydrochloric acid at 5.44 times 10 to negative 11, if we did that in the calculator, we would do negative log, I'm going to tab into my main field, 5.44 E negative 11. We're going to get that our system has a pH of 10.26. Now you have to put the logic test of this. You just put an acid into water. Can you make a basic solution? And we have 10.26 as our pH. No. Your solution already has this concentration of hydrogen ions, 1 times 10 to negative 7. And adding really small additional amount of hydrogen ions is not going to make that go down. It's going to go up by a tiny amount. In reality, if we look at it with real numbers, it makes perfect sense. So let me draw this out. There is our ion concentration of hydrogen ions in water. And if we drop in, I'm going to put a plus here for fun, this, a lot of zeros, hang on kids. 9, 10. If we add that in, that doesn't diminish this value, okay? So this is going to take precedence, and so your pH is, is just going to be 7, okay? So your pH, when you have a solution of acid, remember, keep in mind, if you put an acid into water, this isn't me telling you the hydrogen ion concentration is 5.44 times 10 to 11. This is me telling you you had acid added into water at this concentration, okay? So be very mindful of this phenomenon. And that concludes video two, self-ionization of water, pH, pOH, and concentrations therein. Please make sure you've taken high quality notes. Please come to class with questions. We look forward to you. Make sure you watch this video as many times as you need. This is a challenging one. So make sure you come to class with questions and be ready to practice these.